Hello, we're here today with myself, Kelvin, Alex and Ruben and we're going to be speaking about vices. Uh, Alex is a trained men's mental health specialist, uh, so he's a great guest to have today to really uh, dig deep into the, you know, the, the questions surrounding vices and how important they are to us and you know, what we can really discuss and grasp from this topic. Um, so yeah. Vices, I see vices as a straight positive thing, whereas habits can be positive and negative. You know, really. So, vices are things that pull you away. Yeah. From your values and the things that you escape to, they're typically negative stuff. The opposite of that is a virtue. Oh, so, okay. And, and your values, so the things that can you can go to that can you know, build positive stuff for you, like going for walks mm. and stuff that allow you to do that. But it becomes a vice when it becomes something that just literally just pulls you away from mm. you know, doing the stuff you're meant to do. So people, you know, if you like to keep fit, for example, go to the gym. But there's people that have the gym as their vice, so they tend to go as a way of avoiding an mm. actual thing. That they oh, do. okay, okay. So vice is just, yeah, just saying. Oh, okay. But then okay. habits, can be formed around that as well. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. can, they can lead you through your vices. Yeah. So you need to have it shift sometimes as well. So what something can start off as a vice and then, no, start, start off as something healthy, but then turn into a vice, right? Like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah, I never really, when I hear the word vice, I never really see it as something inherently good. Because I feel like when you get into vice territory, it means, as you said, you're kind of, it's almost like a crutch that you use to kind of escape or kind of to just displace kind of whatever it is that you're kind of going on to kind of cope, essentially, because it's kind of like coping, coping mechanisms to an extent anyway. So I don't know, I've never, I mean, I didn't know for sure yeah. until now, but I never really saw a vice as something that is healthy, yeah. like out and out. But it can be that some vices can be quite crippling, right? right? That can kind of keep you stuck in certain things and you just, you don't know. No. You know what I mean? Like you want to, just trying to think of one. Like you want to, you want to deal with like a, an emotional issue, for example, right. but like you want to keep fit at the same time. Yeah. But then you can end up overeating yeah. because you're trying to deal with that right. emotional issue. But because you're overeating, you're now going to the gym more. Yeah. So that you right. can kind so of becomes, uh, avoid, but you're just, but all of that stuff is there, yeah. avoiding the thing that you actually should be dealing with, in a sense. Right. 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 Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. usually, yeah, as I said, it's usually things that are just keeping you away from the, the things that are good in your life. Right. right. But like, and they're just difficult or negative coping mechanisms, really. Yeah. So when we end up, a lot of men end up um, going through addictions or and leading towards like deaths of despair which is you know um like through depression leading on to suicide etc but like you've got gambling you've got drinking you've got drug taking you've got sexual addiction um overeating binging does porn come in, into sexual addiction is that separate sexual yes within because it's you're you're driving yourself you're driving towards all of that because you're using that as an avoidance to get you away from the thing that you should be dealing with. The feelings of luck, the feelings of abandon, uh, feelings of abandonment, feelings of worth, not feeling worthy. So you then kind of search for that to kind of mm -hmm. make you, to help you fill in those emptiness, those empty parts of you. So then all of those, all of these things, you know, you, they can all be traded out for one another. Right. So then it's like, how do we move away from these into more healthier, Coping mechanisms into healthier habits to allow you to 
you know, so live life. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where do they usually stem from? Like, why, why is it that people? Yeah. Where, where does that begin? Like, this is for everyone. Like, yeah, where, like, where, where do those emotions? I have theories, but what do you think? What do you think? Oh. So it's, it's, the question is, where does the feelings of ab- abandonment yeah, I, I, stem from? Yeah, you experienced that? Would you say you felt those feelings of abandonment stem from that? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, very easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, not being listened to, appreciated, considered, involved. You know, we was kind of speaking on it um, earlier time. And, you know, you can very well feel abandoned while still in the midst of people. And it can be like that in a household a little bit, with it's abandonment, neglect, that sort of stuff, just because you're, you're not kind of respected as not necessarily an equal, but just as a human on a basic level. So you can kind of look for what you don't get. For example, parents. Um, as we said earlier on, coming from African household, you're not really treated as like, not to say that you're your parents' peers, obviously you're your parents' child, but like you're not respected as like a human who has thoughts, beliefs, emotions, feelings, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, those aren't really respected. So that can make you feel as though you're less than or you're not human, I guess. I don't know, I, I don't know the terminology to use, but that can lead, that can very easily lead to the feelings of abandonment and neglect. So me, for example, it, and it took looking back, but I literally got into my relationship in the school. And that's because, well, part of the reason was because that relationship that I had with my mum was, it was kind of, you know, it was butchered. It was kind of fractured. It was all over the place. There was other things that kind of came into play. Um, other family factors and just external factors as well that kind of messed everything up. So that was something that, I found elsewhere that was kind of like, okay, cool, this this is working for me, so let's just keep it pushing. So, yeah, mm-hmm. for for me anyway, that's how I receive. All is that healthy? Like, 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 if you go into a relationship with that almost need, not to take a personal situation, but yeah. is that is that is that a healthy way to go into? Something? Is that sort of advice then? Um. How old were you? Uh, 14. Mm. The first one, 14. The, obviously, my missus who I'm with now was 15. 15 going on 16. I guess it's like, when you look at ages and the stuff that we experience as we go yeah. through adolescence and then through adulthood and then get into this yeah. point where we're at now. We develop in in big ways. Right. But it's like, how do we form the attachments that we need to form with the people that we end up being intensely emotionally involved with? Right. Because like, abandonment tends to come from the that feeling, you know, it's usually your primary caregiver yeah. or the, the people that you are around quite often. And should you be left, like a, it's, typically it's emotionally abandonment. So if you, should you be left emotionally to fend for yourself without there, without anybody you know, coming to save you or to protect you or to help you through the next bit. So you have to kind of fend for yourself in a way. So a lot of people build up that kind of feeling of lack of trust for other people. They don't really form bonds with people pretty well and whatnot, but there's some people that get into those relationships and then they connect and they feel safe with another person and then they just and they're able to maintain that yeah. level of their own personal safety right. so they can then just move into that yeah. new phase of stuff so I wouldn't necessarily say it's unhealthy but I would say that if you find somebody who can who you can find that safety with yeah. for one another then that will then help you progress away from that in a healthy way right, right. If that makes any sense but yeah, like when you have that feeling of abandonment, then if if it can go in a unhealthy way, where you are not forming good attachments with yeah. anybody, you're not having good, strong enough friendships because you're scared that if you get too close, they will leave. Right. Or you're not forming strong enough relationships, they get too close. You get, right. They get too close. You're like, all oh, right, I don't really want to. Yeah. Go any further with this. I don't feel right. like I should. Yeah. I don't feel safe in this. I'm just going to just move from this to the next thing. 
right. and to the next thing, to the next thing, okay. until, they, until they reckon with themselves that yeah. sort of issue that is happening. So yeah, it kind of it does start from something. There is like a, usually a what they say a trigger retreatment, yeah. and then the path is to get back to that level of security to right. allow somebody to right. do that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say. Yeah, I say it can be unhealthy. It can be unhealthy and it can be a vice. Right. But right. again, it's how you get back onto the path of your own values and like, knowing what they are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, going off that, I would say that it was a vice for me at the time because she was able to provide that safe environment for me. But it was also like, it was something that I kind of took as like my pride and glory. And it was like that for many years. It's held on tight. Right. And it kind of took away from my focus and other aspects, which is why I would kind of maybe say it kind of tiptoed along the vice line because it, it, it took away more than it probably should have. But that's looking back. That's kind of reflecting on the fact. What were you escaping from? Was it that you escaping from something? It, it, was, it, it wasn't necessary. I don't think it was me escaping, per se. Um, obviously, at the time, there was just a lot of mess going on at home. You know, my parents splitting up, that sort of stuff. Um, and just, you know, there was like a trust thing and, you yeah, know. stability. Yeah, and that, that was just the last place I was going to find it at the time. So, obviously, that kind of searching or yearning, I guess, if you want to use that terminology, kind of came with me to school. So obviously that's how me and my, you know, me and my missus kind of got together and I kind of found that at the time. So I probably be held on to it more than I should have. Not to say that it kind of affected me in a detrimental way, but it kind of delayed my... It, it, it kind of halted my progress forward on an independent level, or individual level, sorry. So you say you're like codependent on that? Maybe. Maybe, looking back on it, uh, maybe, but also, just a bit of backstory, I have sickle cell, right? So a lot of stuff had happened from a health perspective, and also she was able to kind of take that on board and, you know, work with that within the safe environment. So it wasn't just, oh, yeah, you know, we're in a relationship, codependency, da 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 da, da. It was like she took everything. That was a big factor for me. A lot of the stuff that, obviously, my mum dealt with as well, she kind of took it on board. So they, it, it was like a whole package rather than just, oh, yeah, you know, this is my girlfriend, da 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 if, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, yeah. I I think um, in regards to like biases, right? Um, and I think you mentioned in the question, where do you, your feelings of abandonment come from? And um, I think mine came from as I'm growing up. I've always just been taught to like work hard, um, be a decent human being, and it kind of takes care of itself. But what happens is when you do that and things don't kind of work out for itself, you don't get, kind of get the results that you want, um, you're kind of left confused. And I feel like my abandonment came from like, my parents just let me kind of just figure it out. And from that, I've had to like, go through a lot of mistakes that I feel like I didn't need to make had I had some, a little bit, a little bit more of like a helping hand or like someone showed me like, yeah, you you don't need to do this, you could easily do it like that. And I feel like as a result of that, um, it led me to like developing like different like biases. So I'll say one being when I was young, I'll say in secondary school, I joined a church, which at first was like a really good thing for me at the time, just really developing my faith and stuff like that and really um, becoming better overall, just in terms of like spirituality and stuff. But over time, what started happening is I started spending way more time there than I did um, for myself. So 
I started seeing like a dip in, you know, my time for my hobbies, time for myself. And I feel like I started adopting a lot of like the personalities um, of the people within that church. And you don't realize it at the time, but you know, after a period of time, I started realizing, yeah, this is not, this ain't healthy still. Like being in church so much, being, doing so much for the church. Cause now you start losing yourself a bit. And it wasn't until I had like an escape when I when I got accepted into uni, that I could like finally just escape and break from it. Do you know what I mean? I'm so glad the youth church it, it was, yeah, because it, if by your definition, like, it's stopping me from kind of doing. It was a place where you were avoiding the other stuff. Yeah. But also, you said that you didn't have any direction, so you tried to go to somewhere that allowed that gave you that. And that gave that gave me that at that time. I feel like. It, it it done wonders in the beginning where I was just like, oh my gosh, I, I actually kind of know what I kind of want to do in life. I kind of know what I want to do as a person. I kind of know how I need to be in regards to like dealing with people. Um, also gave me a sense of self, do you know what I mean? Because when you don't get that at home, it's like people giving you a sense of worth and a sense of who you are, you know, according in line with like Christianity and stuff like that. So at first it's quite good, but then as time goes on and then you go deeper into it, then it's just like, yeah, this is... So you're saying that there were things that you discovered within the church that just weren't in alignment with what you felt yeah, as, to be right? Yeah, as, as I've grown up, so I feel like, in order for like my studies to not take a hit, in order for like my personal endeavors to not take a hit, I can't be spending so much time there, like doing some of the missions that they wanted me to do at the time. Do you see what I'm saying? And a lot of, what I needed to do required me to just kind of focus on me. Um, the advice became heavy where it's just like, you're being told that you need to attend church on a Wednesday and on a Friday and on, on a Saturday and then, you know, partake in other things. And it's just like, whoa, like, where do I get the time to kind of do my thing? But I think where it becomes unhealthy is where you start feeling like you can't leave because then now you start feeling like, oh, like, if you leave, they're gonna say like, your life is gonna go to like pieces. And and that was a lot of like, you know, the messaging back mm -hmm. then, like people who have left the church are gonna, you know, something bad is gonna happen to them essentially. Um, but it's only until I got to uni, I thought like, that, yo, that, that's not healthy still. Yeah. I, gotta, I gotta leave. Yeah, yeah, I think there's one thing, when we end up in a, a community or a, group that protects us or feels like they kind of give us that structure and that environment, like, and you're, you you want to be within it until you don't meet the same values or the same ideas yeah. that they have, and then it's that one bit of, I'm afraid to leave now, because now yeah. once it's like, a, it's like anything, a family, a job, anything, once you're afraid to leave and you start to address why you're afraid to leave, you start to think, that's when you start to question the healthiness of that experience and I think that's really important that you managed to leave anyway because you had to be. oh I had to because of the because of university and you're just like I'm gonna go yeah some I had to get, some people still went to university and still continue doing those things so what was it like did you just get to uni and just decide that you weren't gonna go to church anymore or do you know it's weird I became like agnostic for a period of time so I was just like Same. yo like, let me have, like, my own chain of thought when it comes to, like, spirituality, like, because I just feel like I've just been heavily indoctrinated for a long period of time. So when that happens is you kind of don't develop your own chain of thought. You don't, mm. especially if you come from an establishment where you don't get to push back on, you know, ideas and stuff like that. So it's just like, okay. And then I started meeting people of, like, different religions and... Mm the way they kind of displayed faith to me was just kind of amazing to me. And it just kind of made me question like, yo, what's going on here? Like, you are able to display like a selflessness, you know, a giving, a joy, a happiness that according to my, my, my religion is, you know, only we can display that because it's the one true God, if that makes sense. But then when you meet mm. others who kind of display that more perfectly from 
you know, the church that you've been in for a long period of time, it's like, what do I even believe in now? Do you know what I mean? So it made me question a lot of things at the time. Okay, so I've got a question for you then. Um, how much is that more advice than it is a tip, well, let me not say typical, but how much is that more advice than it is a Christian encounter? And just the, the, the underlying nature of how some churches can be when it comes to that sort of stuff. That's a good question. I'll say, I'll say it's a, it's a little bit of both, bit of both. but I'll say more on sort of the Christian nature. Christian I'd say nature, my, okay. my experience with yeah. Christianity Church at the time, but yeah. looking at it initially, I would say it's definitely the best because yeah. I spent a lot of time, especially yeah. in like my early days there, yeah. like mm -mm, it's a bit too much. Right. Right, because obviously you ended up there because you said you had no direction and mm -hmm. that. So at that time you kind of needed it, I feel, I feel, yeah, I feel yeah. it's fair to say. Yeah. So, okay, no, I hear you, fair enough. Yeah. yeah, but like now I would say like, if they were like different biases, I'd say definitely for me, like social media and stuff like that. Like my consumption of just media in general. So like, be it like shows, sports, social media, that kind of stuff. And that's now, like currently, that, that's say, what yeah, you say yeah. your verses are. Yeah, now. like when, but I don't know if they're like unhealthy, but I, I, my screen time is high still. I feel like they can be, you know, I can't lie, because I'm kind of similar. Maybe not so much social media, but like football, sports, even like video games and mm -hmm. that. There'll be times where I'd be sacrificing some sh to watch the football or to play the games. And it's like, it's stressful shit that I'm sacrificing. And it's obvious, it's like, I'd rather be doing this than dealing with that. So, and I know sometimes I can just be, you know, sometimes you just want to do what you want to do. Like, it's not so much, oh, it's a vice, I'm running away. You just want to do what you want to do sometimes. But I can see for myself that I'm putting things off. I'm pushing, sweeping things under the rug. So I definitely, agree with you in that sense. See, if your screen time is high, doesn't mean you've got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nah, it will tell you like, hey, you done four hours more than last week. What's going on? What's your numbers? Huh? <laughs> no, we're not going to get into that today. <laughs> like, but, I, but is that an issue? Like, if, if, if your phone says your screen time is high, doesn't mean you've got an issue. Is that advice? Do you see it as, do you see it as an issue? Does it take away from you? Like, it, okay, do you know is it what? keeping you away from doing the things that you're supposed to be doing? On certain days, yes. Certain, certain days. days. Yeah, certain days, yeah. Okay, but how frequent is certain days? Because mm. you could be saying certain days and it's like four days out of the week. That's no, like, most just of a few week. days. Like, say you want to go gym, you might not be bothered because now you just, you start one episode and then, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's another, and then it's another. Oh, Next yeah. thing you know, you finish the season, yeah. So I'm going to ask you a question. So that's that's that, 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 that. You used to talk about you do a lot of your screen time because you're avoiding certain things. Why, 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 why are human beings like avoiding? What about that thing that you're avoiding? That's what I just want to ask. Why do human beings do that? Yeah. We don't want to do shit. Stuff is hard. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's Have you it. seen like the price of salmon? I, I'm avoiding I've so much. I've had salmon in time, you know. Because. The price of everything these days, yeah, I, I get why people avoid it's, things. Uh, like, uh, emotional stuff is hard. Yeah. And, and, and when, you have to, when you have to deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis, and you yeah. like, there's some days you just don't want to have to. Yeah. You don't want to yeah. have to have that conversation with yourself. Yeah. But it's not helpful because some, there's some things you need to address. Yeah. Like, why aren't you going to the gym, but you're in, instead choosing, I don't know. Netflix. A Netflix series instead. <laughs> How would that then make you feel after you've finished the Netflix series and knowing that you've sacrificed going to do something that will actually benefit you yeah. physically and mentally? I feel like I avoid it though, but I... It's like, what are you avoiding and why are you avoiding that? I think situation? I think I avoid just to like, I don't want to deal with that right now. Like, mm. I'll deal with it, but give me a minute in it. I, I don't know about you, like, how do you, how do you do it, Luca? Do you just... 
avoid it completely and then you get back to it or nah, you're just like if it's on my mind I can't have to just get it done for my peace of mind because mm-hmm. I, I can't distract myself like that really can like, you yeah can you give yourself a time and place to say I'm going to deal with it then or is it important to like not avoid stuff and deal with it now because I'm more of a when I'm in the better state of mind I'm going to deal with it kind of thing mm-hmm. do you know what I mean but I don't know oh. if if it's if that's unhealthy because that's that's still avoidance, right? Because you're not yeah, dealing with it now. Yeah, like I, I'm kind of like that in the sense of like I I have never been hurt doing something last minute because I know I can do it last minute or at a later time. I've never been bummed to a point where I'm like I will never do that again. So it's very it's almost normal for me to just say I'm gonna do that later, like. I'm just going to do that later because I don't want to really do it right now. As you said, think shit is hard, life is hard, emotional stuff is hard. So I will push that stuff to the side and it's normal. But I don't know if that's unhealthy. Do you get it? Like, is that unhealthy or is that just what I'm doing? Depends on what the consequences are, I suppose. Right. So if you know... So the thing is that I, I look at it from the position of if you, once you know what your values are, mm. you know what's important to you in life. So, for example, if health is important to you, if family is important to you, if, um, I don't know, career progression is important to you, when things come into your world that actively contribute to those things that are important to you, and then you're pushing those things off to the side to do in favor of doing something else, you have to then question why you're not doing the things that will help the things that are important to you. Yeah. So if you have something that you need to do for work, but you would rather not do that now, but do it later, or do it um, as a way of pushing it to the side now so you can do something later, mm-hmm. then you have to question why is it that you are doing that? Right. When you could do it now, yeah. you just relieve the stress of doing it later. later. Right. Right. But what is it that is keeping you from doing the thing you need to do yeah. now? Or in the reasonable time, or in the whatever, in the reasonable time frame, that is not um, overly stressful. So what do you do? What then? happens when what happens when your manager is not at work? Do you do the jobs that you're supposed to do? Mm. Like you know what I mean. So how do you then lead yourself to say, "Boom! All right, I am going to go and do the thing because I know that I need to do this for this reason." It's about how we lead ourselves. But we've got to deal with those problems. We've got to say, we've got to look at it and say, I don't want to go to the gym because the last time I went to the gym and I tried to lift something heavy, I couldn't lift it. And all these other guys, they can lift the thing heavily. And I don't want to feel that feeling of embarrassment when I go to the gym again. So now, I'm just going to, when the option to go to the gym comes up, I'm just going to just watch something instead. So now, you're... It's like you're moving away. Now, not to say this actually happened to you. I'm only saying people's, mm. it's a process that we, what we think about and how we think about a thing and how we talk ourselves out. So. Whereas you can just say, I'm going to go to the gym anyway. Yeah. And slowly mm. pick stuff up so I can then lift heavier. Yeah. Because I always wonder, like, if I do, like, self lead and ask myself, why am I not doing stuff? Is that not all just excuses then? It's not necessarily it, but it's, it's the question you're asking yourself. It's mm. not, why am I not doing this stuff? It's, what is making me not <laughs> do the not thing that I'm it. supposed to do? When I say the thing I'm supposed to do, enter anything into that gap. What is making me not go to the gym? What is making me not eat healthily? What is making me not do the work mm. for this person or this job or this project or whatever? So Alex, when, you come, when you ask yourself that question, and you come to an answer, say that we speak about the gym, a fear of failure, that's what came to my mind. What did, then would you do about it? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not it's a, a, how do you overcome that? A, okay, so how do you, how do you overcome those, those questions that you're asking yourself? To mm. like, so once you find the answer, what do you do next? I would say it's a starting point. It's a starting point. It's a starting place. It's where you now, you're looking at it, right, okay, cool. To be able to say, all right, why don't I go to the, what is stopping me from going to the gym? It may not be an immediate answer. You may not be like, all right, boom, this is what, this is what it is. It may take a while, but you, 
if you start to ask yourself, if, you, if those things are important to you and you want to improve yourself, you want to improve your life, and you, that's what you want to do, and you are actively not doing it, you have to ask yourself what it is that is stopping me from doing that. And it's a beginning, it's a beginning point to start mm -hmm. that. Because then at least now you're asking yourself the question and then you can be like, well, what is it? So when you do go to the gym next, you begin to notice. But at this point is what I mean is like, when I say accountability is important, but it's not always going to be there to help help you. Sometimes you can have people there to guide you. Yeah. Like for example, I would say, all right, so what is it that is stopping you going? You then take that and say, and ask, what is stopping me mm -hmm. from going? And you begin that process and that journey for yourself. Yeah, I would say, is, can sleep be your vice as well? If you're avoiding something. Listen, you sometimes, again, it's, it's yeah, important. you know, I'll be stressed, yeah. Sleep's important. Listen, I'll sleep, you know. Yeah. Because you sleep the problems away. <laughs> but will you wake up with more clarity? Or will you wake up feeling like... I feel I refreshed. Avoid, I avoided the same that And then to do. I'll look at it again, I'm like, ah, oh, now I'm going back to bed. <laughs> I'll do that a bit, a I'll do a bit circle. another time still. Yeah. But that was before, though, when I was like, Really going for some some heavy stuff still. Can I ask, is there, for you guys, is there a key relationship between Definitely. If, if there, it depends what sort of problem it is. Firstly, I'm having to deal with. So it's important. If it's a problem regarding a situation with something that's on my mind a lot, then I'll sleep it away. But if it's a problem, say, this has to be in here, but I just can't be able to do it now, then I won't really like sleep that way. I'll, usually, I'll just get it done. So it's a context thing because, like, if you yeah. say, like, if you come up with a problem and you need the problem solved, and sometimes you can be like, "All right, this is tomorrow's problem. I can't, <sighs> I, I can't do anything more with my brain right now. Yeah. I need to go yeah. and do something else, or I need to go to sleep." Yeah. And then the next morning, you're like, "All right, cool. I need to tackle that that problem again." But if it's like a, <laughs> I'd rather sleep than do the thing. Yeah. That's when it's a kind of like, you know, that's that's when that's when the issue is. Most like, most of my problems that I've felt on the past past month or two, they've mainly been things that are, are out of my control. So it's like I was about to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you deal with what you can control. Yeah, but it's still like because of the way I kinda am, I will still give those problems my mental energy and that's what drains me and leads me to the place where I just wanna sleep and all I wanna do is just escape that. But what are the things that we can control? Um, the things we can control, well, maybe having an assignment due in or having a work-related thing due or... If you really feel like you need to go to the gym today, for example, and you feel like you told yourself for two days, I'm going today, the time comes where you're going to go and suddenly you know, you're making a hundred other things you want to do instead. That's those are all things that yeah. you can control. You can control how you react, you can control how you yeah. behave, you control your actions. All the things that those are things you control you can't control you can't control the things that other people bring. You can't mm. control other you know what I mean, like those things happen outside of your locus of control. So you know what you can control. You can then direct yourself to do the thing mm. that you need to do and work yeah. your way out of those vices and out of those things. But sometimes it's heavier for people. The, like the intensity is deeper for a lot of people. Yeah. So it takes a lot of work. I think sometimes. for me, I realize it does take a lot of work to just, it's not as easy as I, It's not easy. Sometimes these problems are things that I've initially got myself into as well. So it's like that bit of guilt coming through. Mm -hmm. These are problems that when I, I never got myself into, I can't control them. It's much easier for me. But, you know, recent problems, they haven't been ones that haven't completely been my fault, not been my fault. So it's like, I feel, when I feel some level of responsibility for that, I, it's not as easy as for me 
just do what you can to not think about it or do this. I just, I, I can't really, all I can do is sleep. And uh, yeah, I mean, but that's kind of rare though. It's not like I'm constantly encountering yeah. problems that are my fault. But, um, if there are things that I can't change and that were never initially to do with me and they've just sprung, then, then the vices can change. The vices are, you know, I, I, I'll do, um, to be fair, I, I'll just smoke a lot, to be honest. If you... If, I, if I'm, as a, as a vice, as a way to escape the reality I'm faced in, like, but then again, that's a vice because it leads to addiction. And I remember I stopped for a long period of time because I could see it spooling into an addiction in winter. I had no sense of, I only ever felt happy if when I went on holiday. And then when I was in London, I'd work and do the same old routine. My only vice when I got home to give me some sort of dopamine was just the smoke. And then I noticed that was a problem and then I, was, I had to stop doing that straight away because I realized you can't really, that can't be the thing you look forward to coming home, you know? Like, um, I definitely, I definitely hear that. Because I mean, usually when I looked at vices, my my perception of what vices was was something beneficial. So I would have said making music and going to the gym and stuff. But no, they're all virtues now. Yeah, that just the other side. Just so the other side, side vices. I think yeah, smoking is the main vice and sleeping. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So. And this is in relation to that suppressing emotions. Because you were talking about, you know, about emotion abandonment. And I've actually never heard that term before. It's, how can one person be abandoned? Like, how, how does someone's emotion become abandoned? Like, where does that, how does that happen first? And then how does that lead to then people suppressing emotions and using vices to suppress those emotions? So the emotional abandonment is the feeling of like, when uh, when somebody withholds emotion from you, like like a, like a like a core, like a primary caregiver, for example, like we went back to the beginning when we talked about the beginning, right? Yeah. If they kind of hold that kind of, if they withhold certain things from you, so like for example, um, there is a big thing. Within the, I would say the African and Caribbean community where if you have not done something worth value or valuable educationally, career-wise or whatever, love is withheld from you. Yeah. So it's only it's when you get the A stars, it's when you get the first class degrees, when you get the big job that people start to like, yeah. you know, oh, that's my son, that's a yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's not that when you tumble and you fall and you fail and whatnot and this and you're not actually reaching that level of success itself so then you start to abandon you so it can become quite internal for you where you're like abandoning yourself because you're not saying to yourself you're not giving yourself the right level of compassion when you don't meet the mark that you're supposed to meet does that make you like hard on yourself then it makes you hard on yourself and yeah you I feel that. That, and then you abandon yourself because you're like, you're not giving yourself that level of love, you're not giving yourself that level of compassion, that feeling to say, you know what, Damn. you did the thing. It might, you might not have, you know, passed that time, but let's try and do that again. Because mm. now you have to start coaching yourself into the thing, which leads back to the self-leadership stuff. So you've got to start coaching yourself into the, into the place, which is the position that a lot of parents tend to have in some mm. of their life. And then it's these kind of markers that keep that hold that people hold on to because they're like, oh, uh, because I didn't get this grades, because I didn't do this, because I didn't X, Y, and Z, they are no longer deserving of all of these other things. Right. So it's about being able to acknowledge what it is that we have and give ourselves the kind of the emotional backing that we need. But we abandon ourselves in that, and we can feel abandoned emotionally by. By people, even if you, when you're a child and you bring something to your parents that you're struggling with, and they don't affirm that, yeah. that's the abandonment that we're kind of talking about. Because then you take it back to yourself, and now you've got to learn how to deal with that. Yeah. So it's multifaceted. 
and it's complex. That's the best way that I can explain it in, in this yeah. kind of yeah. generalistic term. Because it's different for each person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, in a, in a general way, this is pretty much what that is. Yeah. Can go deeper. Yeah, it sounds a lot like me, the the person or what you're describing. It's a how, lot to do does, with my upbringing, yeah. How does that feel for you? What, then or now? Or? Yeah. Sounds a lot like you. Now? I f- it sounded like a, lot, a lot like me before okay. when I was, I'd say, my, that period between 11 and, I'd say, 21, I would 11 say. 21. Yeah, because, again, expectations were put on me that I did not even ask for or even, you know, express. And so when I don't meet those, then it's just like, well, you're not meeting these, so, you know, there's nothing like we can do for you. There's no, there's, there's no affirmation. There's no, it's fine. You can, you can try again kind of thing. But it's more of a fear of like, um, well, if you, don't achieve this particular grade. If you don't achieve this, then it's like, well, if you keep doing that, you're, you're not going to amount to nothing. And at that time, when you're hearing that stuff, um, it can feel kind of feel like the end of the world still, because it's just like that's all you know in it. Like you can't even like process that at that time. Whereas now, I feel like in the past few years, I've had to rebuild myself, reaffirm myself, re, you know tell myself that, you know, like some of the things that I needed to hear from myself. Um, but I can't hear that from others, if that makes sense. So my friends can tell me and, and they always like tell me like, Kel, like, you need to be less hard on yourself. You need to be not so self-critical, but it's all I know. Do you know what I mean? I've been there. Yeah. And even like, they might say to me like, oh yeah, you're not good at receiving, you know, comments to say like yeah we're proud of you and stuff like that but i'm just like i don't know what to do that now because what does that mean to me you saying that i've never been able to digest that and accept that for myself, yeah you don't necessarily believe so you don't necessarily believe that you have yeah because it's you've weird because you've got all of the tools there like you can look at yourself and know that but when somebody else is saying it to us we have to we have to know and believe that that is true. Yeah, it's weird because I've always had like even if like I achieve something, like it's always diminished. Like so, it's like okay, great, you done this, but it's like, but it's not that. So to me, it's just like do, I can. What do we do with that critical voice? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we have to quiet it. We have to be able to say okay. We have to replace it with something else. With something else. Yeah, but you didn't. Yeah, but okay. So just because you didn't do that doesn't mean that you're not worthy of getting the mm. praise for doing this thing now. And the more we do these things, it's a muscle. You have to keep replacing it with the positive or the things that contribute to us building our building ourselves up. Because then the more and more you do that, the quieter and quieter that critical voice. I mean, it's going to be there. It's usually the voice of a parent or a teacher or somebody in authority of you who has kind of like dampened that in you as you grew up with. Mm-hmm. So it's like a, it's a way or it's a tool that we have for ourselves to be able to say, to replace those really dampening, disheartening kind of words and those experiences and just minimize it so that when a friend is saying, oh, you're good at this, be easy, you can accept that because you're actually doing it. Yeah. Do you feel like you lot are able to easily accept praise? Like you lot can take that in, or you're or you're more like, I mean that's nice, but okay. I find that really hard. I find it really hard for a long time. Mm. I, I, I like wrote a book, won awards, done all these things, and everyone's like, oh yeah, you do. And I was just like, okay. Damn. I'm like okay. <laughs> I did the same thing. I was more like, it's fine, but there's more stuff to do in it. Yeah. yeah. Same to be fair. You don't give yourself a chance when you do that stuff. You don't fully embrace all the things that you've done and can do. Yeah, I feel like that also kind of 
goes into the whole masculine men mentality type in terms of like achieving and keep it pushing, like keep going. I feel like I've I'm able to handle praise only from those closest to me because it means something different. Like so like I said, with the whole sickle cell situation, just the, the focus and you know, the milestones or the goals were just a bit different. Like, it wasn't, the, the, the achievements weren't necessarily external things or like, you know, getting your degree or, you know, finishing your postgraduate or landing this big time job. Obviously, all of that is calm, like, you know, done it and it's fine, it's cool, whatever. But at least from my mom's point of view, it was for you to be healthy, for you to be okay. And so she drew that into me from a young age. So literally it's like, all that stuff is great. And the stuff that I would need for my life in general, career, whatever. But, you know, if I'm healthy, it's a good day. Not to say that it's not the same for you or you or anyone else, but just obviously with what I've had to contend with from, from birth, if you're healthy, it's always a good day. So my mum has always made sure to kind of just Praise me for when I'm doing good in life on a personal level, like I'm looking after mm. myself, whether it's eating, lifestyle, all that sort of stuff, whatever, cool. So it's like everything I do is not always bonus, 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 bonus. Um, but when the people around me tell me, they praise me, they tell me I'm doing well, I'm doing good or whatever, it's like the, the meaning is just a bit different. It's not the whole, oh my gosh, you got your degree, that's great. Oh, you finished your master's, that's great. It is great. But it's from a you know, you contend with so much and you're doing well to deal with it. So it's like, you know, we was, talk we was all talking about love languages earlier on and words of affirmation came up for a few people. And I feel like words of affirmation only work with those around me because they know the context of what we all kind of have to deal with because sickle cell may just affect me, but it's a family, it's a community thing. We all have to deal with it when it all goes wrong. So. Yeah, in that sense, I can take the praise. And I kind of sometimes try to work towards it at times mm -hmm. because things can be so up and down. It's like sometimes I just need that to be able to just kind of ground myself in that sense anyway. So, yeah, that as well, Luca. Um, yeah, I think. Um I haven't really got praised that much, but I don't really feel like I need to. I don't care to Let's get it, you know, keep it moving. I mean, I mean, um, cause you know, you do get those overly praising parents, uh, that do like to give their kids a lot of that. I, my dad didn't really like, he's just, you know, but that didn't affect me in any negative way. I don't mind that. He's just not one of those kind of people that's like, all the time, oh, I'm so proud of you, oh, I've done this, well done, amazing. He's like, yep, you're, you're sort of doing what you should be doing as my son, sort of thing. It's like, yeah, this is, how, this is what I feel like I've raised you to be doing this, so mm -hmm. you're doing it. I'm not going to be gassing you too much. You don't need that, which I feel like is fair enough, and I'd do the same to my children, to be fair. I don't feel like, I feel like overly praising, and overly praising yourself can give you a level of complacency that, is it's not really necessary. There's always more to get. There's always more to achieve. So, um, but to hear from it from that perspective of a completely different perspective in terms of, you know, something that one might call the bare minimum, just being healthy. Yet mm -hmm. that was so important to your parents. It's, it's really, mm -hmm. it's really um, enlightening to hear in a mm -hmm. sense because it's like, you know, praise can really vary and, and just based off experiences and what's important to. You know your parent, because I mean, to me, for my dad, he wouldn't. Health would just be a standard thing. He's never questioned it in in his children, but it's like, yeah. I mean, it's just again to hear it from that perspective. It's just, um, yeah, it's yeah, Latin, I mean, parents, for sure. Parents know their kids to an extent, but they know yeah. they know what they would know what their kids, if they're paying attention anyway, they know what their kids are receptive to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
my only challenge with what you said, Ruben, was more like if you didn't have a sequel cell, would you receive the words of affirmation in the right in in that way? Mm. Obviously, you wouldn't know because you've always had yeah. it, so you wouldn't know. But yeah. like, that's the kind of thing I'm like. A lot of people don't have the condition, but because they don't have the condition, they don't receive no. the love in the same way. No. Um, so that's one thing I'd always just like, you know, just kind of look at and just think: mm. Is it because of that that I'm getting that, or is it? No. Yeah. You know, what does that look like outside of that? I've never been asked that question before, actually. I've never, well, obviously, I've never had to look at it from any yeah. kind of different way. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't say for sure. Yeah, it's not one that requires because, an immediate answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, for sure, for sure. But I don't know. Going off how my mum is, I feel like the energy could still be the same. Maybe mm -hmm. she might be a little more stricter just in terms of what I become, what I do in life. But she's. Her overall energy is just like that, wanting me to be healthy and that. And, you know, back home, for example, as in Africa, there's always shit going on and people are always dying left, right and centre. And there's always this happening, that happening. So my mum is just very like, you know, sick or so are not health as well. There's a lot of like conditions that kind of run through our family. So it's very easy for her to be like that now anyway. But. As I said, in general, her overall energy is kind of like that anyway. So I reckon I'd still get it in some capacity at least. Maybe not to the level that I get now. But um, yeah, I don't see too much change on her side anyway. But again, I don't know how to... That answer can kind of reflect that kind of reality because it's not the one we're currently in now. So, yeah. How do people learn how to self lead if you've never been shown how to say it. Because a lot of what I'm hearing around that conversation is the thing that it's about being given the autonomy to sort of guide your life. Right. But if that has always been suppressed, you didn't get that emotional, those emotional, whatever the word is, or qualities at such a young age, how do you then learn that in the later stages of your life to then be? How, how do you learn to self-lead when, how do, you, how do you learn to self-lead when nobody's Led you in a sense. Um, you find you find the. I would say that you find the people that can help you. So as you did say about the accountability, yeah, that's important. Whether that be a coach, whether that be a therapist, whether that be through whatever resources you can find available. Um, one thing for me. So I read this book called um, "Can't Hurt Me." I don't know if you heard of David Goggins. You heard of David Goggins? No. You heard of him? No. So he's an ex. Navy SEAL yeah. guy, like black man, went through a, a hell of a lot growing up, and his whole mission in life is about was about trying to get become a Navy SEAL. You know, work through his trauma that he had with his dad and mm. growing up and all this kind of stuff. But like, so for me, on one level, listening to that book because I I listened to it when I was in the gym, listening to that book was an addition to all of the things that I've, I've been learning because he talks about creating, you know, his whole stories themselves, he talks about creating these conditions for your life that allow you to then move out of where you are being stuck at so that you can kind of move into the next bit. And some people just need to hear these things from different people at different times in life, in different voices in different ways, right? And um, things I knew already, things I knew that I knew I had to, I knew I had to strive for my goal. I know that I'm ambitious, but I had to find, I had to move past motivation and start pulling myself out of these, of these trenches myself and figuring out how I'm going to get out of that. But also being compassionate to myself while I'm doing so and also focusing on, on the goal at hand. So getting myself out of that. So if I said that I did want to, I do want to be more healthy and I do want to go to the gym more. There will be days when I wake up and I'm like, I don't want to go to this gym. Yeah. But I'm saying that as I'm putting the coat on, as I'm tying the do-rag, mm -hmm. as I'm putting the shoe on, and like, I don't want to go, I don't want yeah. to go. As I'm stepping outside, walking through the gym, I don't want to be here. Basically. Scanning in. <laughs> yeah. in. So it's just like being like, I need to be in this thing. I don't want to be here. I'm going to do the thing so that I don't have to be in here anymore. 
Yeah. But then once you're in it, you're kind of just in it. Yeah. No, so no. it's kind of finding those. It's like finding those things that will help. That will help guide you into those kinds of spaces to allow you to do the best possible work that you need to do. Right. Um, and that was for me trying to form those habits at first. And now I don't need to listen to that anymore. Yeah. But some people need coaches, some people need therapists, some people need those things. And they all can work together to allow you to kind of move into the next phase that you need to get on. Because we all need people. We all need someone to kind of guide us into the next thing. Yeah. That it allows you yeah. to then self-lead yourself. Because you're like, all right, I've got the tools now. I can just say, look, I can get myself out of bed. I can get myself to do right. I can right. plan for the next day in the week and say, look, yeah. that's what I'm going to do. Right. I tend to self-isolate when I need to, like get some stuff done or like move on to the next level so it's interesting to hear like you say you need to create those conditions is that a bad thing to kind of like self-isolate and like well I call it that but it's just me kind of just saying I'm going to block everyone out for a hot minute and I'm just going to kind of zone in and do what I need to do is that a healthy thing to do self-isolate from just everyone people social media everything just and just focus on what I need to do to you know, move on to... Do you do what you need which, to do? I feel like, yeah. But, like, at the expense of that, I feel like there's been periods where I've done that and it's kind of, you know, affected, like, relationships that I've had uh, with my friends where they might not have heard from me for, for a while, they might not have, like, you know, seen what I'm up to and stuff like that. And... But I feel like having those selfish periods have been quite beneficial to me. So it's like... Is that a healthy thing to do? Is that a bad thing to do? To like proper... I wouldn't, I wouldn't go with the whole good and bad mm -hmm. thing, but I would say that if you are taking yourself away so that you can focus on what you need to do and then actively go out and do it, then that's a process that you need because you need to kind of like, you need a bit of quiet so that you can do the things you want to do. If you're isolating because... If you're isolating and you're not like, receiving help, from outside, or support, or care, or love, or guidance, or whatever, then that can be seen as unhealthy because you're trying to do this all by yourself. And we, can, mm. and as I said, we need people. So I knew for me, <laughs> I needed to, I had to kind of get myself in a routine of going to the gym. So I set up a group chat with three or four friends that said that wanted the same goals and I said we are all going to be doing this thing so now each morning let's try and motivate each other to do stuff I want to like share your goals share your fitness goals or whatever yeah. and then at least they had that you know we have that container to say look this is what we need to do mm -hmm. each morning someone's checking in have you been today yeah. you said you wanted to go this amount of times this week how many times did you go this week is this something that you want to do you know what I mean? Like, how, like, like, are you doing okay? Because if you've not done these things, it's something up. So having the people there to be able to be accountable to and for is important. So when you, if, you, if you take yourself away to focus on the goal and then go out and do it, it's fine. But you also kind of need to think about if you are isolating other people around, away from you, that's the important thing mm. to, to think about the balance that you need. Yeah. Because you need that. We're humans. We need to communicate. We need to connect with people. So many not, people can't do this mm -hmm. by ourselves. And a lot of men have just been conditioned to do that. Yeah. To do everything by ourselves. We've got to strive. We've got to fight. We've got to do all this stuff. Which is true in some contexts. But we... No war, no war is fought by one person. Right. Right. You're not desert island alone. People go mad. Because yeah. they need to... They need to, you know, share ideas. And yeah. So, like... Yeah. When we have like conversations with like our friends and stuff like that, and we are trying to like motivate them and stuff like that, can we just? Does it matter about our tone and how we say things to them in, in order to like, you know, motivate them? Motivate them, especially like when we hear like excuses as to like why we're not doing things. Because I've always, when I speak with guys, like how harsh do you speak to them? Are you just like? <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm yeah. harsh, but I'll just kind of just see it for what it is. You're not going because you don't want to go. Mm. But, and then I get hit with the, rah, like, at least like soften it, small, small. But I'm like, but 
<laughs> see it for what it is, it's not what's, what's happening. So for all my life, I feel like when it comes to guys speaking about certain situations, I think we're just very honest with each other and just very um, blunt. But I don't know if that's been a good thing for us growing up. No. I'd say. Is that not I would say, with emotional intelligence? Yeah, because I was just about to say, with regards to that, like we all want honest. We all want honesty. Well, we want honest people around us, right? But honest, but honesty, yeah. Honesty without compassion or love yeah. is just cruelty. Hmm. So, even if I give it to you straight, if I have no inf- none of that, it's cruelty. If you Why say, cruelty? Yeah. If, with, without, if you're doing it without care, if you're doing yeah. it without care, and just like you don't want to do that because you're lazy and you're doing that and you don't feel like you know you don't want to go and blah blah blah. If somebody doesn't feel cared for and you're telling them the truth, it's going to be much more hurtful than you telling them the truth but actually having compassion behind it. Mm. So the truth is cruel? No. I said being honest <laughs> without having compassion, compassion or, love. or love behind it is cruelty. Mm. Because True. you can be honest. Yeah. You can tell somebody. That's like you, people... you, okay, somebody walked in, if, somebody, if one of your friends walked in and said, and they, walked, and they had some trainers that they really liked and you said, and you didn't like them. Yeah. Yeah, but why and, and didn't I like and you, them? And you, and you didn't like them, right? Mm-hmm. Are you just gonna tell them that you just don't like their trainers and their trainers are bad? That's cruel. But they like it. But, but you, it, you choose not to. You either choose not to say something. Yeah. No, you this, choose not to say something, or you just. Or you no, but there's a difference, though. But if they like it, no, if they the like man, the shoes. If they like the trainers. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, there's I, context. No, I, 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 I get think what I know you're what saying. example you're giving, but no, you. I, I, I get what you're saying completely, but sometimes the man was just like that. The man will do that yeah, out of love. Is, like, they will be like, I don't know what to say. Is it, out of, is it out of love or is it just out of a lack of knowledge of how to communicate the thing? Because, <sighs> See, because, because, because we mask that over yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah, with, no, with, no. With male 100%. relationships. We say, oh yeah, man, yeah. the man, guys are just like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't have to be. No, no, hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Is that not bad? Where, where did Chris Lambert find it? That's where it comes from. Finish what you're saying. Then no, because no, obviously <laughs> I, I I get what you're saying, but it's like it. There's so many layers to it because then it's like, you know, the man them just being like man them. They're being like men around each other. Around each other, it's like. I don't want to, let's say there's a few of us in a group chat, let's say there's like five of us in a group chat and like two two are in shape, one is decent and then the other two are like fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Go on, sorry. No, but th- why'd you say like that? No, but I'm just, I'm just getting to the I point. Mean, fat is fat, is fat but, in fact, right. but, what is, but what do you, but it's what you mean behind it though. Right, right, but we all want to get in shape. We all have the same goal. The people who are already in shape, want to stay in shape. Mm-hmm. The guy who's okay wants to get in better shape. The fat people don't want to be fat anymore. Mm-hmm. So we all have the shared objective of going to the gym and getting in work. And we all know that we are going to have a better gym journey doing it together mm-hmm. than trying to do it on our own because some may tend to self-isolate or some may tend to avoid or, you know, all the stuff that we've been talking about before. And so the man that will get onto each other as like, motivation in some sense. They, they're not going to sugarcoat it, like, oh, maybe you should go to the gym because no, that shirt you wanted to wear was fitting a bit not, too tight. Again, like, that's, not, that's not what I'm saying. Ever. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm not saying that's not what, what you're saying, but I'm, I'm saying, like, this is how the man kind of can get to the point of how they talk to each other. Like, we, we're not going to do all of that, you know, model cuddle type stuff. We will just say but, it straight. Russ. But he's saying that but it comes still at, comes at an expense from. to us because fair enough it's the truth, but that fat person's gonna go home and think, rah like that's that was mad harsh still. No but <laughs> obviously it's relevant. It's it's it's, it's, it's still the not truth relevant, though, but it's, it's relative. So take it out on the gym isn't it? Hmm? Take, take it out, out on the gym. gym. See, that's the typical answer. That's a typical man. That's, that's a typical, typical <laughs> man. Uh, like, no, 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 don't no. get mad at me. Go to the gym <laughs> and get your weight up. Like, do you know what I mean? That's the that's the answer. Also, but you also have to think. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. it's funny, but it's funny because it's like I get it, but at the same time, you also have to think about. Okay, and I, I you're being Mr. Counselor, bro. Right. 
I, you are. But like, you also have to think about this as well because you have you have certain people who enter into these things, right? If you've got a, you've got a condition like that, you've got mm. people who are in, you're in a group of this. Mm. You are not in the physical shape that you want to be in. Right. You've got people that are in the, in their in, in in an ideal yeah. shape that they want to be in. Yeah. Now, I'm working on my own mentality to get myself to the gym. Like even me getting there is, is hard, right? Yeah. And even me getting up, it's hard. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, it's difficult, right? Yeah. So now, it's the, I, I need to be encouraged to go to the gym. Now, there's a way of encouraging mm. that isn't about reminding them. That no, they, I'm that, that, still that, 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 I'm that, reminding them. reminding them that mm. they aren't of a standard. Of a standard. Yeah, of yeah. a standard in the group. As you, you you're, make... you're, meet, you're, meeting the, you're meeting the standard within the group. There isn't a, there's a way oh, of encouraging okay. them without, yeah. without, oh, without, right, without oh, saying, right, okay. you look like that, I look like this, oh, you need to go. Yeah. Right, okay. I don't think we do that. About, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm just kind of bringing it back down to the yeah. Yeah. But, but I'm saying there's a way of doing that. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying. Because there's some people that are just cruel with it. Yeah. yeah. And they won't and they won't accept they won't allow for those days where there are days where people just feel like yeah yeah no but how are you and it's saying how are we be like so this is another topic that we go into but how are we being friends in that how am i encouraging you to get to this to, hmm. to get to this standard how am i yeah. how am i doing that am i am i am i helping you get towards these goals or move away from these goals yeah and it's about that whole vice thing so if you've got somebody who is not at that level but they're making the incremental steps to do it, especially when it's a big change like this, they can be easily pushed off. Yeah. Oh, I'm not gonna look like them. It's hard for me to do that. They're doing all this stuff and you know, I just can't. And it's stuff that, it's stuff that people hear all the time. So now instead of them, again, like you said, now instead of them going to the gym, they are now in the fridge. Or they're now yeah. on watching TV. <laughs> but they're now, whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm just saying that but you have to remember yeah. that you have to remember yeah. that people are coming all from different places, and you have to yeah. know if you again. This is just a context of you know you don't know like I don't know what you know you know your friends whatever. Right, 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 right. But again, what I'm saying is just on a blanket generalist term, I'd say there's a way of helping people and yeah. helping your friends. Without it being rude, not necessarily rude, but just singling out and saying that you need to do that because right. da, 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 da. yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, which is yeah, which yeah. is how and again, which is how a lot of us as men communicate in groups, right. getting onto each other and doing yeah, this yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah. and it can actually like work against us <laughs> yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm with you because again, it's like we talked about the critical voice thing. Like right. now, you're just part of that critical voice. That is, yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, they yeah, just yeah, yeah. they're hearing that. Yeah, there's there's and obviously different. Ways. There's obviously different faces yeah. of it. There's obviously mm. different faces. Like I get what you mean. You know, some we I'm sure we've all met that person that's like, oh, I'm not rude. I just say it how it is. And it's like, well, no, you're just a. Like, yeah, you don't yeah, just say yeah. it. You're just a. Yeah. I get it. I'm with you hundred percent. And mm. obviously, the man is not always just gonna get onto each other and just say, oh, get your fat ass up, let's go to the gym. It's not always going to be like that, because sometimes... You may think it, but... Well, well I can only yeah. talk about right. my group, because it is relative. It is yeah. relative. People are going to work in different ways, and people are going to help people in different ways. But um, literally, sometimes when you're, when you're not feeling up to it, you need that person to help you. And the man can read the room. The, man, the, the guys can read the room. Well, at least my guys can read the room and say how it is like, listen, none of us are really up to going to gym right now, but we, we got a job to do, we need, some, we need to get up and go to the gym, yeah. and then it will work. So it, it swings around about us, it goes both ways. Other times it'll be like, bro, you're fat, get the fuck up, let's go to the gym. I've had friends pull up, like, I've said, I'm, I'm, I'm down, I'm not going. I've had friends pull up, get in the car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, yeah, literally. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, you know your friends. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what's going to work and you know what's not going to work. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. again, if it comes, but I'm saying it's the place it comes from. Yeah. That's yeah, important. Yeah, I understand that. That's all. So, but, no more bants then. But with banter, <laughs> banter is very different. Wow. Banter is very di banter is different. But. Are you, are you almost saying that lads' banter is 
quite detrimental for most of us then. It's how, it's how a lot of men communicate, yeah, for sure. But I also would say that when we look at banter, we need to be... Because there's, there's, a, there's, a there's a fine line. He doesn't a, agree. There's a fine no, line. No, no, when he said detrimental, I thought like, like that's a bit of a stretch. Hmm? A, De- detrimental, you know, like, it's just banter. That's it. Yeah, but that's what we say is just bands, but isn't that minimizing? I mean, my, what my, else may my feel? best experiences with friends have been getting cussed out and me cussing them out. It made you out. a better person, didn't it? And it makes me like, cool, whatever. You're character. my guys, you still, you still <laughs> love each other. <laughs> like, I've, I come into school with a trim once, yeah? I, I got violated all day, <laughs> like, and all I asked the guys, give me some support, man. <laughs> 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 like, I had enough girls looking at me funny that day, man. It's like, <laughs> and even they just joined in as well. And it's like, it's like cool. What was wrong with the trim, though? Oh, I, just, I, I went to two barbers that day to try. <laughs> I went to the second barber to try fix it, but it made it worse. No, but what, what were you going for? So I went for a fade, yeah, but basically ooh, the whole thing was cut off there, and it had a little bit of hair on the top. <laughs> 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 40 pound down. Oh my 40 pound down. Days. 40 pounds? Like 36 something. 40, 40 pounds. Damn. Just, but yeah, so then but, going but the next after day. After that, I bet you your trims were so much better. They were, that. exactly. You learned a lesson. In, until I went bald. But like, exactly. That's the point. That's the I, since then, I never <laughs> ever said, you know what? I can't go on with a bad day, bad trim again. Like, I've, yeah, I've been called spaghetti arms by friends. What did I do? I got wham. And then I ended up benching more than the guy that called me spaghetti arms. I think that's how it should be, like. You can not get my weight yeah, out. Man. I'm like, like, you can Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to what extent are you not doing yourself? Because if you got spaghetti, nah. you got spaghetti arms. But it's like, I, I didn't want to have spaghetti, and that's exactly. You can't say that, though, bro. I didn't want to have spaghetti arms. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, yeah, but I felt was insecure that, about that. Was your desire for change motivated by, like, support, compassion, or was that motivated or by, being like, bullied. Well, I wasn't being, I was being, uh, I wasn't saying bullied as a stretch. They were, they were my friends, yeah. I say it back, but it's like, it, my, my friendships were sort of, yeah, we would cuss each other out. I would get a lot of, I would get called this and that, I say it back, but at the end of the day, where I am now, I don't think it's had any negative impact on me. Mm-hmm. But it's, you did go home, you was like, oh, wait till I, I get hit. I went home and reflected a few times, yeah, yeah. and like... There was a couple of times you was looking at your trim in the mirror, right? looking, Yeah, looking at my arms, I was thinking, you know what, it needs to change. And okay, but so who's the weak one in your group? Who's the one that can't, is there someone that can't take criticism like that? Mm, nah, not really, like, we, we all just so used to it. It is a toxic group, but it somehow works. It somehow just works. Toxic. But it's not toxic in a bad sort of, like, toxic. We just won't, there's not really, like, a... I see what you're to get it, it's like... Yeah, I understand it. I think us men need it. We need that. I don't feel like I don't. It need gives it. us balance. Like, yeah, I a lot of guys mind. are kind of like, laugh at my pain. If you don't laugh, you cry type stuff. So we, we just laugh until we can't laugh no more. So it's just very easy to just, you know, if you're built like that anyway, there's, you know, I've been around some guys and they're not built like that at all. Like, it's literally broken out into like a, a fight because you can't handle the banter. You know, when you try and carry banter, from one place to somewhere else, and it just does not translate. Yeah. Like, you need to know who you're dealing with. Like you said, your friends should know their, their, their friends. They should know who you are and how you handle things, so, yeah. It's like, yeah, but like, with some people, the stuff I say to some friends, I know I can't say it to other friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now it's a whole you know issue, I mean? like. <laughs> okay, so there is a fine, there's a fine line, there's a fine line between banter and bullying, right? Yeah. It's a, fi- a very, very, very fine line, yeah. right? And the, the obviously bullying it, banter it kind of works on kind of honing in on what tends to be lighthearted insecurities of another person, and then you can kind of just like yeah. do that. Yeah. It tends to be an inside joke or yeah. jokes yeah. within the within the friendship group. Fine, yeah. Bullying specifically singles one person yeah. out, yeah. and then you hone in on their their insecurities to the point of them changing, but or, but it can you know it can go far it can go further than them saying oh what's bigger on some to the gym yeah further yeah. than that into quite dark yeah. places right right yeah and it's like so I'm just like there are there are thin lines one thing that I one thing that I can recall from school but also 
in the work that I do is that not a lot of boys, men know the line. Yeah. yeah. That line is yeah. danced over. Yeah. yeah. And then, that, and, then yeah. You, and that's when you're out there scrapping in the street, yeah, 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 doing, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, doing yeah. that madness, and that, and then everybody's thinking, oh, here you go, it's just a joke, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah it yeah, was yeah. not. It was not. It was more. It just was a just joke. you got me on the wrong day. Yeah. With the wrong tone. With the wrong. I feel like that's you know, all part of the toxic process, though. But right. like guys so, that it's, don't aren't able exactly, to kind of. Exactly because now they have been dancing in bullying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah, they're yeah, far. Yeah. They've. they've gone so far from yeah. bantering one another or being able to just kind of joke with one another. Yeah. yeah. So far from that, they've been deep in this other area. Yeah. It's yeah. Like now people are building up resentment. Yeah. Issues, yeah. problems yeah. for me. What so, what what can we do to like be a lot more softer in our communication to like other black men? Because I just feel like not, all I know is just to banter and keep it honest and stuff like that. But I feel like do you feel like there's other yeah, I think, I think stuff the, we can say? I think the premise of the, the question is kind of like, it's not about being softer. It's just about being able, it's just about how you communicate mm. with one another. Like, that's it. Like, if you're learning how to, learning how to, again, with emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. being able to know when a line has been crossed, being able to yeah. care when a line has been crossed, being able to just communicate clearly what's going on or what you want to say to somebody and the, and the intention behind it like it's that's where that, I think that's yeah. where it begins because it's not about necessarily being softer and again it's not only men that you know are, are harsh with each other like yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a human thing people are tend to be quite harsh with each other in, our, in the cultures that we have right. I'm just saying it's how we communicate with one another how we're approaching these particular to uh, particular topics and whatnot. Right. it's yeah. not about saying oh you always have to be soft and you have to be like it's not that to just be caring about somebody, mm. <laughs> just caring about how somebody's going to receive something. It's like it's fine to be aware yeah. that somebody might take this wrong. Yeah. So how am I going to communicate? Well, I need to communicate with them. Yeah. yeah. Do you like? Are you able to like be quite emotional and affectionate with the men you're around? Yeah. You can cry around them. Mm -hmm. I can't. Can you cry around your boys? Yeah, can you cry? Oh, because I mean, I could. No, no, I could. Yeah. Will I? Mm hmm. Never. What are you? No. Mm. Potentially. Maybe I've only selected a couple. Maybe. I actually have cried about one of my friends before, mm. but I teared up. Mm. Um, Was he like compassionate with you? Yeah, as my close friend at the time. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I do think, you know, that with the whole banter thing, it's like, I also think it's not everyday banter at the same time. Like, you see them friends that they just force the whole getting onto you thing a bit too much. Like, every day. Like, it's like, okay, bro, just chill. Let's just have a nice conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the bit where, to me, crosses the line. It's not what you say, but it's how much you're saying it. You could cuss me out and then say something really nice to me five minutes later and say, oh, it's all for my good play. I don't mind that, but if I'm not seeing much positivity and yeah. it's constantly this, but oh, I'm joking, I'm joking, it's like... Yeah, it, it, nah, there's, a, there's a layer To there. me, that's toxic. That's a toxic friendship. Mm. Uh, what are you really trying to get? You're just trying so to cuss me up. Wrap up, guys. Just one last question here for the close. Um, so yeah, I do have one as well, just to yeah. follow up. So yeah, go, 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 go. Yeah? yeah? What vices do you have? What vices do I have? Yeah, if any. So one thing that, I kind of, that I've had to manage <laughs> is my drinking. Oh, okay. So... I, before I started training, I was a journalist for five years. Okay. And it was in a, it was a high stress, like, publication. I was kind of just like, you know, no, little to no sleep, consistently, like, at work, at home, and I really hated it. I was really unhappy. And, you know, people kept saying, you know, if you're unhappy, leave, just whatever. And I was like, no, I have to, I am the oldest son, I got this, job, it's a good job, I should da, 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 say that. But I just mm -hmm. found myself not sleeping, um, getting home and then drinking. Mm -hmm. And okay. then obviously not necessarily not necessarily comatose, but just like I'm this is what I'm pouring when I get in. Yeah. And then I'm falling asleep, having bad sleeps, mm -hmm. waking up, drinking strong coffee, and going around mm -hmm. the same day. And then that was the cycle that I kept perpetuating. Okay. So it was, it was the coffee, 
it was the stress at work, it was the drink, it was the poor right. sleep, it was the coffee, it was the stress at work. Right, so, was, right. so then I could go in on that cycle over and over again. That's just one no. <laughs> of those things. And that's just in the week. So I had to, over time, I've had to re-establish my relationship with alcohol, alcohol. itself. Right. To the point where I've been like, I'm not drinking this summer or I do, I'm doing particular programs. I'm like, you know, I'm not having any of that. For me right now, I'm just like, I only drink once a week. In the mm. week, like, I'm here, like, there's no business for me to be drinking in the weekday. Right. Like, really, truly. Like, mm. I've got things to do right. today. Why am, I, why am I waking up feeling worse about myself or worse feeling? Um, I stopped drinking coffee because I was like, it wasn't giving me, you know, everybody was like, oh, it's giving me the energy I need, it's giving me this. Uh, yeah. I just wasn't doing yeah. that. Like, it just was, it was, I would drink it before midday. Yeah. And that would be it. But yeah. it would still be in my system when I'm trying to sleep. Oh, and then I'm okay. not sleeping properly, then I wake yeah. up and I have coffee again. And I found myself yeah. consistently doing that same routine. So again, it's about understanding how we break the pattern. Right. If it's not giving you, I want to say joy, but if it's not giving you like, it's not giving you the, the right benefits or the, the, the things that are kind of keeping you intact, then it's about figuring out how we flip the relationship with it. Right. So I'm good at just stopping. Really? I can just be like that. Is that your self-leadership? <laughs> yeah, that's just yeah. tools that I've had to build up over right, time. Right, I just feel like right. I'm just going to be done with it. Okay. How long would you say all of that, that whole cycle? Because that's a vicious cycle. How, how long would you say that lasted for? Well, I was pretty, I want to say young then, but I was like mid-20s. I was like, I didn't have any tools or resources. I was just, yeah. I just was just like doing the thing. And then like right. I had to, and then I realized it was just, it just, I just wasn't feeling great about myself. And then yeah. I, just, that's why I started making the connection. I started asking myself, like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Obviously, as it's a full circle moment, would you feel like each of you are kind of taken away from this conversation? Um, I guess just understanding biases a little bit. Um, I mean, I had a decent idea on what they were, but obviously having someone, you know, more clued up on that sort of stuff. Um, help to kind of just contextualize it a little bit and just to kind of understand it for what it actually is and how, what it pertains to and how it interacts with like different things such as self-leadership and, you know, pride and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, 100%. Yeah, same thing has just helped contextualize the word a bit more and what I came in thinking it meant something else than what it actually meant. So that says mm -hmm. enough really. So yeah, that says enough. I think being honest about Compassion and empathy is cruelty. So I'm sorry to all my boys. <laughs> well, I've been honest, but I didn't quite give you that love. Still, still need to change though. But yeah, <laughs> give that honesty. <laughs> uh, yeah, no wrong. So that was the full circle episode on the vices, um, and quite a difficult episode for some of us to even comprehend and discuss. But we got there in the end. But yeah, for those of you watching at home, I sort of wanted to ask you more about vices, and and the question to you is: when you do have your vices and you do lean back into it, looking at what you've seen from the episode, what will you be taking from it to help you? get away from the vices and really try to move forward into the next phase of your life. Yeah.